Hi there, my name is Neil Blevins, and this tutorial is called Converting 3D Geometry into Displacement Maps. There are many techniques and tools for converting 3D geometry into displacements, especially for transferring details from a high-res mesh to a low-res mesh in games. But this lesson is about a quick and dirty method I've used in the past to do basically the same thing. So as many of you know, I've made lots of images of Starship hulls over the years. Here's an example, which despite looking 3D, is almost entirely made in 2D in Photoshop. A few years ago, I decided to convert a few of them into displacement maps for use in 3D, where I take a simple plane and displace it into the pattern. For example, here's the displacement map I painted, and here's what it looks like displacing the plane, and here's the final result once I added a color and occlusion map. For the main paneling, it's actually pretty easy to paint the square shapes that make up the patterns, but what about the smaller greebles like these? How do you go about making them? Painting their height in Photoshop would be very difficult to do, so instead I chose to build these small greebles in 3D, then convert that geometry into displacement maps, then add those maps to my hand-painted map to get my final displacement map that I'd apply to the plane. So this lesson will be about how I did that 3D to displacement map conversion. So here's the process. I first modeled some greebles in 3ds Max, although a similar workflow can be done in pretty much any piece of software, such as Blender for example. And here's an example of the 3D geometry that I modeled. And then our goal is to displace this plane into the same shape as the 3D geometry. In a displacement map, the value white means something is high, and the value of black means something is low, with gray value somewhere in between. So I take the high-res geometry, and then I assign a flat color material with a gradient in the diffuse slot. Uh, in the case of 3ds Max, this could be a standard material with 100% self-illumination. But since I'm using V-Ray for this particular example, I use a V-Ray light material with the gradient map in the color slot. For the gradient, the only thing I adjusted was the rotation to minus 90, so that the gradient went up and down instead of left to right. Now here's my 3D geometry inside of Max, and you can see what it looks like here. And then I applied a turbo smooth to it to make it all smoothed. And then I put a UVW map here, which you can see if you look at it from the front angle, is from the side. And again, when we apply the color, the color black of the gradient will be applied here, and the color white will be applied up here because it's following this particular set of UV coordinates. Now after assigning the flat color material to my 3D geometry, I render it from the top viewport, and I get a result that looks like this. So this is my displacement map for my plane. Again, white areas are the highest areas, black the lowest, and the color comes from that gradient projected from the side using those UVs. So to do the test, I hide my 3D geometry, I unhide my plane, and I assign a turbo smooth to the plane, setting it to add a bunch of extra faces. Then I add a displace modifier and place my rendered displacement map in the map slot. Then I render my plane, which looks sorta of right, but it's too flat for some reason. And the reason for this is because our strength, in other words, the height, is set wrong in the displacement modifier. It's using the default of 1.0. So what should be the correct strength? I could eyeball it, but let's find it out more directly. If I select my original 3D geometry and go into the Utilities tab and go into the Measure tool, I can see that my original geometry is 8.613 units in the Z dimension. So my original object is 8.613 units high which means that the value of my black and my displacement map still represent zero, but the value of white represents 8.613. So to get an identical height with my displacement, I need to change my displacement strength from the default of one to 8.613. So now let's check the render, and you can see that they look almost identical. One nice thing about the displace modifier is you can see the results in the viewport. Here's me double checking that the height of the displacement map matches the height of the geometry in the front viewport. The purple is my 3D geometry, and the white is my displaced plane, and they look pretty much identical. If you don't care about seeing the results in the viewport, and you're a V-Ray user, the more efficient way of doing this is using the V-Ray Displace modifier instead of the regular Displace modifier. Here's the settings I use to get identical results. And to get it cleaner, you can always reduce the edge length, at the expense of course of render time. So if you need to make a really complex displacement map with overhangs or a really complex surface, there are better techniques out there. But if your needs are simple, like adding pebbles on a flat terrain or some vents on an enormous sci-fi megastructure, this technique might be the way to go. So give it a try the next time you need a displacement map. 
So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you want to see more videos and written tutorials like this, please go to neilblevins.com and go to the art lesson section. And if you want to be notified the next time I post a new video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.